going? I'm doing pretty well, actually. Um, yeah, very well. Definitely, like, huge improvements, um, for sure. Just kind of been, I don't know, it's been kind of easy. Okay, so describe where you were when you finally said, oh, my God, I have to reach out to Robin, and today, which is what? It's been um, a when week? I had to reach out to you, I was just, oh, my gosh, desperate. Um, were you, you, know, you were binging, you know, right? dark hole of, yeah, binging and just eating all the time. I was waking up, going to bed. It's all I thought about all yeah. the time. It was ridiculous. Didn't see any way out of anything, and... Now I'm kind of, I don't know, kind of just going with it. Food is day by day less and less uh, like a thing in my life, if that makes sense. It's just... Yeah, that's 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 miraculous. Yeah. Don't you think, compared to so, where you were a week ago, it's like, it feels, when you're in that space of like obsessive, compulsive, obsessive compulsive with, with food, that binging aspect... It's it's so intense. It's uh, it seems like a fantasy that you would actually have ease and relaxation with food to the point where you don't think about it. It doesn't impact you. There's no morality. There's no fear. There's no good. There's no bad. There's no controllingness, right? Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's, yeah, I don't think it can actually happen when you're in when you're in the midst it, of it. Yeah, it's, it's like, like how do you go no back? How do you go back to normal, like a nor like how do people all around you, how are they so relaxed with food? Like how are they eating a cheeseburger or a taco or a pancake or a croissant and not going through insanity? Like they don't have yeah. this dark spiral of horror. Right. And I know? thought I couldn't do it because I thought I knew too much. Like that was my cru like that was my thing I was holding on to. I was like, I know too much about this <laughs> and how this food's gonna kill me. Like how am I ever gonna be able to get out of that? Yeah, and well <laughs> I know too much. Well you have to yeah. question the knowledge. You can don't right, see this, right. but I'm putting quotes around what knowledge is. I know too much. You know so much that it's mentally ill. Like the knowledge you have is insane. Yeah. It's not healthy knowledge. Have you ever thought about that? Oh yeah, no, it's not it's not the good type of it's not the bettering my life. It's No, it's, it's obsessive, compulsive, crazy. I know so much yeah. fear mongering. I know the fear and the danger yeah. of what that really does. Half of what I more than I mean ninety nine percent of what I actually found out was just I mean, what I know or knew is not even the truth. So it's it's fear based. Yeah. It's so it's not, emotionally distorted would you say that's like when that when you what you're saying is I know too much all of that knowledge is based on radical radical extreme fear yes worst yes. case scenario knowledge 100 percent. yeah yeah so how much of that is actually based in reality like that's how Probably it is none of it right like it's that radical when you eat that yeah. one bite it's that bad you know, it would be that bad if you had an anaphylactic reaction, like, um, right? You could say Peanut someone that has an anaphylactic right. reaction, it's that bad. Mm -hmm. So why is it that they're not insane like this? Yeah, I don't know. Because it's not emotionally. It, it's not an right. emotional c constructed badness. It's a real badness, like real. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So to them, it's not emotional. It's... I don't want to eat that. I will have horrible, 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 like, I'll go to the hospital, I'll almost die, I'm not going to be able to breathe, you know, massive. It's actual true. It's not constructed in a mental fear of it could happen. It does happen. Right. And that mental, I feel like that mental fear, actually, like, you start to, like, take on these illnesses, and then yeah, well, you start to, like, make yourself, like, sick from your emotions. You it's do. It's hard to admit to be, like... Wait, I right away I'm fine. I can eat whatever I want now. I can even eat gluten and I have celiac yeah. and I literally feel fine. You, and totally. I'm like, wow. I like <laughs> I don't know. Self inflicted all of my stomach pains and headaches. So I'm like the, our last session I talked to you about the science around that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's thought it's okay, like um Doctor Cannon. So. Oh, I wish I had his book in here. Um he was, uh, he's the, like, 
the 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 main he's like the king of physiology you know i have a degree in exercise science which is all physiology right right most of what i studied was his work okay well there was a big section of my degree where we talked about fight or flight response and how it works because you know oh right so anyway so he studied with pavlov pavlov so very specific to um how we respond to fear and anger they studied our physiological response to these emotions and happiness and conditioning like Pavlov's dogs. You know, he's most well known yes. for. So Dr. Cannon studied Pavlov and worked with Pavlov and they, you know, but they, but Cannon took this huge, uh, broad understanding of it and created, he termed fight or flight. And so, gotcha. um, he published his findings and you can buy this book um, or find it online for free. It's, it's a, it's available for the world at this point um, on Amazon. So I bought the book because I'm writing about it. Right. And I right. read his entire book. It's freaking easy. Amazing. It's an easy read, but um, if, but I also have a bio, like a physiology background. So that could be why. Okay. It was easy yeah. for me. Um, I'll check it out. Uh, well, you don't need to. You just lived through it. Um, but how <laughs> our, our emotion, and I lived through it too. So it's like, I, re I remember very clearly if I was around food, it was like I'm on high alert, high alert. You know, it's almost like being in a room with a predator. You better be aware. And so your right. brain goes into micromanaging the safety of the food, right? How many calories, what's in that food. It's so incredible really it's not a we call it a mental illness but right. in reality it's a mechanism it's a it's an inborn hardwired survival mode mechanism that occurs when you're in danger when you believe you're in danger and that's the thing that the brain it doesn't have to be real you just perceive danger the brain responds as if you are in danger right so how much your perception, your perceptions are a very big influence on how that response occurs. And his findings were incredible. They and, and, and he actually describes how they found this stuff. Like what did they do? They, they studied humans who had drink and something corrosive in their life. So their esophagus didn't work, okay. you know? And so they could study how the gut responded without, um, chewing without pleasure and that's where a lot of the science of if there's no pleasure the brain doesn't register to the gut and there's no salivation and there's no gut release if there's no pleasure yeah. i know this is like so old like a, a hundred years old and the studies were done in like the 1800s so his book was published i think in 1923 or 27 wow. yeah and how rage anger and fear are the most radical response physiologically to that system. And so in a, those emotions trigger like you're going to have to do something now. So do something now. And that feeling of do something, do something, do something. That's where purging comes in for bulimic. That's where over exercising comes in. That's where binging comes in now, 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 now that impulsiveness, right? Right. The obsessiveness is the fear, the fear aspect of it. Right. Like right. how we micromanage everything that's in the food. That mechanism is meant to be look, used when you're in a very tense environment with predators. Hearing gets gotcha. expanded, all these mechanisms. And you're experiencing that as you eat. Right. So keep in mind, and I think I said this to you last time, your mouth stops salivating in fear and, and, and anger. Your gut stops what they call watering uh, or the, the digestive enzymes don't produce for hours. The more intense, the longer it takes for that system to just kick back in. Peristalsis completely stops. So anything in digestion stops digesting and it stops moving. It sits there. Um, there was one woman that he uh, describes. They were studying. She was coming to New York because she was having horrible digestive problems. And they found that when her husband flew in with her or drove with her, when her husband was there with her, her digestion was far worse. 
when he wasn't there, she had normal digestion. So they were studying her, you know, waist, her gut. They were studying certain things. And when he was there, food was undigested. It would be like the meal from yesterday was still in her stomach. Interesting. Yeah. Well, he, come to find out, she, he was an alcoholic. Huh. And she was dealing with incredible stress and strain and angst when she was around him. Right. Having to manage. Right? This is described yeah. in this book by Dr. Wow. Cannon. You know, he describes all sorts of stuff they found with animals. They, it sounds terrible. It is terrible. But they would strap down a cat and have all these stuff. And then they'd bring a dog in. And the dog would be, ah! And the, then we'd, they would study the heart, the adrenals. They'd study the salivation, the gut, the stomach, the um, all of the stuff. <laughs> and these animals right. ended up being their pets, and they were loved. And he describes this book at the very beginning. But, yeah. So imagine you're being told, you know, go back into that fear response. Some of what you're experiencing with food is like 100% fight or flight reactions. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know how you were like, it feels like a, a predator, and I was saying, oh, it's like the Grim Reapers right there? Yep, that's exactly what it feels with like. With food? With food? Uh-huh. <laughs> so imagine how your body is responding. Like freaking bananas and kiwis, and I'm like, it's insanity. It but is. I remember thinking. It plays I, a role into your actual system. Yeah, I remember fantasizing. Again, it was like in that environment where you're having such radical fear of food, I, re I remember just wishing I was normal because everybody else mm -hmm. doesn't have, they just don't care. How is it that they're eating this, you know, food that's been fried on a wok, right? Mm -hmm. How are they eating this and not obsessed with what's in it? I know. You know, it really just, isn't, it becomes a fantasy, especially yeah. when you're deep in it. They're I just ordering off the menu. Up and just eat a slice of pizza for breakfast that's left over from yesterday, and she doesn't even think about it. No, I'm nothing. Like, wow. That is, uh, I mean, that's a fantasy when you're in this type yeah. of crazy. Um, but you need all of what you're doing, right? Yeah. So it's that point at which people. Now, this is when it's a dis where we call it a disorder versus disordered eating, which is like you're pretty messed up. Dysfunctional eating where disordered is you have you are now in a space of complete and total horror, not just around food, but around your body, like your whole body. So do you how much what type of measuring were you doing? Like I used to measure my stomach mm, five or six times a day with a measuring like it's you see how obsessive I was about the body fat. Mm hmm. Weighing myself, wow. measuring myself, putting on jeans, making sure I stay thin. So where is the bear? Where is the predator, really? And I couldn't tell that either. To me, wanting to be thin and wanting to stay thin was like, oh, that's honorable. That's like no big deal. Uh -huh. Right? I never saw that as the problem, even though if I felt like I was bigger, bloated, weighed more, it felt that to me was like, I'm going to die. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't connect the dots until I had already chosen to commit suicide to, oh, well, that's why I'm so insane with food. Like those, that, that, that was not revealed to me until that, until I'd already started giving it all up to commit suicide, right? Right. So if we were to say, don't worry about your food issues, that's, that's actually understandable. Those are mechanisms that are working perfectly. You're super healthy. Like you're healthy there. <laughs> Right, that fear and that coping response and how you manage fear is working beautifully. It's just being projected onto food. Well, why is it projecting at all? Well, you have to look at what's going on with your relationship with the body. You know, it doesn't always have to be thinnerness, right? That's right. anorexia. You can be 500 pounds and be anorexic, by the way, if you believe, mm -hmm. if you're that ashamed of your weight. You know, there is ability, you know, most people, I believe, are anorexic in the mind or mostly overweight. Um, right. It can, it can be projected from, coming from fear of disease, which ultimately mm -hmm. everything is fear of death, right? Everything, when right. you break it down, me being thin or me gaining weight, 
symbolized failure and inadequacy, invisible failure and inadequacy. It's like I can't hide that I'm a piece of shit because it's a physical, totally. physically that. shown thing. Um, that symbolized abandonment, rejection, disapproval, right? And ultimately, that means I will be alone. And being alone means I will die. Uh -huh. I can't handle being alone, right, when you break it down. So all of that, you know, if you look at the food stuff, you can go, oh, yeah, of course you're going to do that. Anybody would do that. Should we really call it an eating disorder? Is that a disorder, or should we call it eating survival mode? Yeah, I mean, it all makes sense. I don't know if it would be a disorder. Right, it's eating survival mode. Food, <laughs> it's really coming from whatever belief you had about your body, what that served, right? What does the dis eating survival mode serve? What's it serving? What did it serve for you? Eating survival, I don't know. Um, what, the disorder? You can call it, yeah, what did it, what's it serving, you know? The micromanaging of food, the compartmentalizing, bad and good. What does that serve? What's it, What's the point of that? What's the whole point? Uh, to keep you from being, like, unaccepted. To keep you from... Okay, you keep you alive, I guess. You skipped in your a, mind is like a survival thing. It is. You skipped a few you skipped a few things. So go back to the, you know, simplicity, right? So for me, the the overexercising, the micromanaging of food, the purging, all of it served my my need to be thinner. So right. See, so you skip way down. I want you to go rudimentary like let's go step by step through what it serves. This whole entire fear-mongering, gut-leaky bullshit that you're following. It, radically, right? Radically. What did that serve? What is it serving? My need to be... Health. Thinner. Well, was it really about health, though? Or was it thinner? Um, thinner. Okay. See, that's really important. Well, I mean, kind of both. I don't know. I'm thinking well, about did it, you like, think what was... Part uh, of me was to be thinner. Part of it was to be like this clean body without disease. Yeah. How much of the clean body without disease? Well, you got a lot of pride out of that, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Curing leaky gut or trying to cure these, my autoimmune disease, like my thyroid issues and trying to cure bloatingness and like, I thought that was like, a noble life quest. I can spend yeah. my whole life doing that, and I am just this great person for doing it. So you took and you made it about your value as a human. Oh, totally. Like yeah. a religion. Yeah. And it became a pride thing. Like, I'm successful. I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. And I would look at other people who weren't following these, this, like, these beliefs that I had, and I was like, oh my gosh, they're killing themselves. And I actually would believe this. Like, yeah. It's not like, I actually would be like, oh my gosh, like these people are like killing themselves from eating these foods that, that's feeding their guts or feeding their disease and feeding bacteria. And I would truly believe that. I mean, now it's fucking crazy to think that I was in that, but like that's, that's how I thought. Do you see how that, okay, so this is in terms of like trying to give it a name, that's the orthorexia that's out there. Yeah. So many people don't get it. They're like, they're trying to be healthy. Are we going to demonize that? Is, the, is this the food industry demonizing health here? <laughs> what do you say about that? Now, they were, what what'd you say? What are your thoughts? It's crazy. It's crazy. And, like, I was, I thought everyone was against, like, our own, I don't know, our, yeah, and the food supply was bad and people are revolting against us and, People are trying to kill us, and like it got so insane. Where I was like, you can't, I can't trust anybody. Okay, I can't pause trust for a second. Stores. I would read pause labels for a second. On organic things. Oh, like, totally. Where did it come from? Are they actually trying to kill me? I'm like, it's crazy. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. That didn't come from you. You didn't make that stuff up. It's not. No. Where are you hearing this? Oh my gosh! From everything I'm reading online. To what are you reading? Like, what'd you say? Where are you hearing this? 
I know it's online. online. So who's Actually, supporting this online? Of, um, naturopathic, my, my doctors, I went to naturopathic medicine. I went to them and they were, you know, they kind of put it in my head. I mean, people of a, I would say of greater authority yeah, who's, or that are supposed to have greater knowledge than I do on that subject. That's really who I'm hearing it from. So my question to you is the, not to say, I do not want to demonize or even say that it's like saying all religion is bad. All religion is, radical mm -hmm. where is is this the leadership in that environment that's doing this like where is the, the because this to me sounds like someone who is orthorexic we can call them that if we want to give them a label who is leading this like someone has like maybe psychological illness because yeah. if you so so for example you took on that position you absorbed mm -hmm that attitude it's not your attitude you right. it, it is once you internalize it right internalization mm -hmm. and dogma right this is these are two very important little discussions internalization is when you take information that's given to you by an authority you trust it that's the dogma when you take dogma and you internalize it meaning i believe it blind faith Blind faith. It then becomes your belief. I believe right. it. Not that's a belief out there. It's my belief. And so they it, it actually impacts how you feel. I believe I'm unhealthy. I believe. But you're to come to that conclusion, you're using the belief that someone gave you. So for you to Sorry. think the food industry is trying to kill us, the government's trying to give us cancer, Yep. Normal Chem trails are going to... And the naturopathic world is against the normal doctor world, so it's like... It's bizarre. Sense. Well, there, exactly. so it's radical. So I don't want to... So think about this for a second. Is everybody in there like that, really? Or is it no. just kind of like you... Maybe did you gravitate to that totally. type of fear-mongering? So there's got to be totally. people who are not radicalized who can say of course eating a piece of pizza is not going to kill you Are you kidding me it's like if you eat it 50 times a day all day long maybe so right. you're going to be constipated maybe have some bacterial issues uh -huh. i think that's really important to, to look at because it's really easy for someone like me because all i deal with are people like that you like you uh -huh. that have been right so brainwashed to such a radical degree, but why were you susceptible to it? And how did you not see how crazy that that is? And maybe that's just the way that is. I mean, how do you take people like we're so influential if you just believe something? Can you see how you slowly get conditioned into that? To where uh, you yeah. cannot eat broccoli. Broccoli is too acidic. Oh my gosh, yes. Or the whole, what's the new one, the whole bulletproof? I don't know if you know much about that whole diet. I don't. Thing Bring it up. On. Bring it up because a it's lot of people listening wellness, to this are going like, to be into this. There's not just, they're not just diet, like diet books coming out. It's like the wellness books now that are masks as diets underneath. So you go into it thinking you're like, again, the whole health thing, bettering, helping yourself get better. But really it's just another radical, radical diet where green beans are bad for you and you can't like – don't eat things that are yellow. Like, it's crazy. Okay, you're not talking to me. I know all this shit. I want you to talk to the person listening to this who's who's in it. What do you say to someone who's like, she, but they are bad. I mean, don't say no, the lectins and the, you know, all that stuff. They are. I, what do I say to that? It's just kind of, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. It's absolutely well, crazy. Is it's, there a way to manage some of this, Mike? you know the minutia mm -hmm. of like you've lost touch with the forest mm -hmm. right you're looking at one striation on a bar on one tree that's got one aspect of bark right <laughs> you don't even know you're looking at a tree anymore mm -hmm. you don't even know you're looking at the forest anymore yeah that's a sign of survival mode mm -hmm. right so I think the problem is people don't realize that your fear of death and fear of disease may be actually promoting this type of 
psychological outcome. So, yeah, right. So in order for you to have come out of this the way you have, right, would you say that you were like a leader in understanding all this? I mean, you clearly took pride. If you took an exam right now on leaky gut, would you pass? Oh, totally. Well, Could you teach a class on it? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then they tell you that yeah. the food is causing your binging. What did you say? Then did they, did you, were you ever told that the food and the contents are what's keeping you binging and craving? And oh, my gosh. Yeah, I actually went to a therapist a couple months ago who I was telling her about my issues with food, with food, and she's like, well, you know, it would help if the night before you plan out what you're going to eat, you know, keep out the sugar thing. I'm like, oh, oh my, my God. I, I was like, I don't even know where to go for help because it's like you go to the help and they're doing they're the same shit in it as well. I know. That's what I ran into. Yeah. 20 years ago. I was told the same shit. I'm like. I was like, I could run circles around this woman. Like, There's no way out of this. No, uh Because you realize when someone. And you're like, Jesus, I'm just going to have to live like this forever. And then that's what you're told, too. You're like, this is just going to be, you know, an addiction you have to live with forever. I'm like, fuck that. Like, oh, I'd rather God. Die. It's so bad. That to me is just. They, she, that therapist, he or she meant well. Yeah. Really, truthfully. Mm -hmm. But the, when you heard that, was did that make you so, like, oh wow, there's no way. Did, did this yeah. person specialize in eating disorders? Like, did, did they? She, she did, yeah. Okay, now I'm a little offended that you did not come to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. Is it because I, I you knew I would say I mean, you got to stop? Soon after when I started watching it, because it was a couple months, I started watching your videos again, and that was the only thing that actually, like, actually helped. But I went back to her, you know, went back to her, and well, I was just like, oh Do you my think gosh, it's because you wanted to hold yeah, on to like, some of that? Accept it, accept the addiction. I'm like, oh my God, this is the worst hour of my life. Yeah, my, what happened for me when I got the same exact thing, 20 years ago, I had the same exact thing. Is that was the beginning of my suicidal thoughts? Uh huh. Because I was like, "Are you kidding me? You're telling me that I'm going to live with this to some degree for the rest of my life?" <laughs> it was almost like they hand she handed me a gun, and said, "Here you yeah. go. Good luck." Exactly how I felt. Like, you like, want me to no count my to goddamn live. calories? Like, no way that I came down here to live this life just to be hyper focused on what kind of bananas and what I'm eating. And I'm like, there's no way that's my purpose here. Like, there's no way. It doesn't make any sense to anyone to on any spiritual level that I would come down here and that be my life. Cause it, once you're in that, that is your life. No, there's you no, can't escape. There's no goals. There's no college. There's no family. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I never would think about having kids or family. Cause I was like, how am I ever going to raise a kid or go to school when I 24 hours a day? I you can't have this. No, you can't. You're so focused on your body. And exactly, all yeah. of the work you got to do to keep your body that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And it kind of is self-fulfilling because you're having the issues that you're trying not to have, right? Like if you're having right. diarrhea or gut problems. No shit, you're going to have gut problems. Mm -hmm. Your whole gut <laughs> isn't working. Mm -hmm. Because you're in permanent fight or flight. It's so easy, actually, when... When you really think about the truth of all this, it's so easy to stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's relative to how much you've been suffering. It's easy when you've suffered quite a bit, mm -hmm. you know, but it's like, be okay being fat. Be okay mm -hmm. with disease. Mm -hmm. Which one's worse, fat or what you were just in, in your perfectly pure body? Oh my gosh, the latter. I'd rather be, <laughs> so many people just don't get it. And that's okay. I, I hope they don't get it. I don't want them to get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't want them to have to get it. Through made, that. I, right? It made me realize, like, okay, so how often do people commit suicide because they just aren't willing to face the truth and accept the truth and face the Grim Reaper? Because it feels like yeah. that. Because your whole brain has been trained and conditioned to believe you're gonna, it's gonna be a miserable, horrible death. Diabetes uh -huh. is the worst. <laughs> yep. Right? It's like, really? 
I don't know. To me, it's like if I'm going to die of cancer eating like a normal person, well, then my body's prone to cancer. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Me too. See? I am so cool it sounds so it. morbid, oh but. Right, and that's why I think about just the celiac thing. I'm like, if I die of, when I'm 60 or whatever from intestinal cancer, or whatever, at I'm least like, you're going to have like if I can 40 years. I live my life, right? I'm like, I don't care. Okay, that right there. It, if that's the case, you have 40 years of freedom, 40 years yep. to explore life. That's life. But Or you can mm -hmm. be obsessed and you can be dement, kind of in this dark space of preventing it to where you don't have any life. None. Mm -hmm. Which one would you rather? Which one would you rather? The first one. No shit. I have intestinal but cancer. But you oh realize that, that it took you Actually, being I'll in... Actually, I'll probably live longer. I'll die before that of stress. I'll yeah. die when I'm... I'll... 10 years of my cortisol levels will be will messed up. Me. You got it. You're going to end up with so much. So you're going to end up having a heart attack or okay. a stroke or something. Yeah. And then they're going to blame it on the gluten. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, the thing is, once you come, when you, when you come off of all the it, it, serious anxiety, have you already noticed physical changes? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, complete, like, I'm fine. Like, it's really bizarre. Like, and my friends, family all know me as always having these issues, gut pains. Like, I couldn't touch anything, let alone ever touch dairy or yeah. anything. Yeah, well, that's and all under coffee, milk, I can cheat. Like, I can eat whatever. I'm eating ever everything, and I'm fine. Are like, you binging at this point? how fine I am. What'd you say? Are you binging right now? No. So you're really, so, um... At this point, what would what would bring you to going back? Oh my gosh, nothing. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess if I start thinking about being thinner again, or start thinking about, I don't, I don't know. Ugh, I don't even want to think about it. I'm like, I just feel like I won't ever go back. Like knowing how I don't know that I'm out of it. it took the time, kind of been processing out of it and having the freedom now of it I'm like why would I I don't know mm -hmm. if you really have celiacs um, too once you kind of get over the fear obviously don't you agree getting rid of the survival mode around food is like imperative mm -hmm. once you're there don't you think you'll get a better understanding of your actual if you actually have these issues um, oh, yeah now it's like, just take the goddamn medication. Exactly. Do you yeah. really want to micromanage your food again? Because that's what you get to no. focus on. That's your life's focus. I mean, there's no harm in saying, all right, I'm going to, I don't know. You get to find that balance, right? What's the truth of the body versus the truth of fear? Do you really want to be afraid anymore? Right. You know, it's not to say... There's no, well, you see, this is where you need to recover by uh, orig, or, initially I have everybody, you got to not give a shit about anything unless there's some anaphylactic shock. Right. You got to like, you got to get safe with food, all food, not mm -hmm. this type of food. It is all food mm -hmm. and you need to figure it out, right? You need to eat a, so for me it was, you know, I started with childhood foods. Mac and cheese from Kraft Box. Yes. Kraft. Yeah, that's, where I'm at. that's where I started. It was like, I just got to start with basics. I want to have, I want to be able to have a bowl of cereal without measuring anything. Yeah. I want to just pour a bowl of, of cereal, crazy. pour the milk in, and I want to eat it <laughs> and not think about it. I want to enjoy it. If uh -huh. I want to add fiber to it, I'll add fiber and I'll mix. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I didn't throw the baby out with the bathwater, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I don't have any fear anymore. So I can have a cheeseburger. If I really want a cheeseburger, I'm going to go find the one that tastes the best. I don't care what fucking fat they use in it. I don't care what they're fried. The, 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 I don't want to yeah. care what oil they're using to fry it. If I care about that, that care might be causing more physical harm than the actual fat they used. A hundred percent. Because 100%. of a fear response that's inflaming my whole body. Uh huh. And eating something that you truly then feel it's gonna hurt you. Oh my gosh, the effects of that. Going right. To, so now you believe that what you're putting in your mouth is like toxic. Gonna 
wear, yeah, tear up your intestines. If, I mean, that fear alone is gonna is gonna tear the intestines up, not the food. Not just tear the intestines up, but it's also impacting your thyroid and your adrenals and your ovaries mm -hmm. and all of that entire mechanism that's preparing you to die. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with a death response. Yeah. And that over a French fry? Over the fat yeah. that it's fried in. It's crazy. I know. People are very, very focused. I had to have like a box of mac and cheese and one of my friends was like, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> what has yeah, happened to you? All the people come out. I'm like, I don't give up. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Oh my God. Do you like, know what I this is? This is like someone fine. who is. Watch me be really fine. This is like someone who's been in a radical religion, like the one I was, okay? And everybody knows me as the clean, pure, no alcohol, no drugs, no sex, read my scriptures, and all of a sudden they come in the house and I'm smoking a cigarette. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. And I did have that pendulum swing, right? Well, the pendulum swing went from pure perfect to I'm going crazy because of the shame I had mm -hmm. because I felt so bad about myself. That's like going from pure eating, clean eating, the whole concept of clean eating. How do you feel about that now? Uh, I want nothing to do with danger, it. Danger, danger. So then, so for me it was, you know, like that all or nothing kind of pendulum swing to me is more about the pride and shame cycle. Like, uh -huh. I'm a horrible human. Why? There's no point to it. Someday I'll yeah. go back to church. But for now, because I've sinned, I might as well try to get as much sinning in as I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And that was why it went so crazy um, for me. But the moment I realized, look, what I originally have experienced and even everything I've done up to this point, even in the shame and the overcompensating with shame, all of that is so understandable when you get look at the big picture. If I'm holding myself to such a perfect, perfect environment of purity and perfectness, and I'm not perfect, of course you're going to feel horrible about yourself. So that part of it. So when you, I took a step back, I the whole thing was forgivable. There she goes. Can you hear me? For 37 minutes. Sorry, you guys. This is a Skype session. She's international. So if this doesn't connect here, I'll stop recording. This will be the session. All right, I'm going to spare you guys. <laughs>